As we all know, there is a global situation going on that affects the whole world. And of course, people looking for jobs are affected in a significant way right now as well. Most companies around the globe have moved their recruiting efforts to online formats. This is also true for consulting where the case studies, behavioral interviews and other problem solving games now all take place in the online world and this of course poses some new challenges to candidates. In this video I'm going to share how the recruiting processes of MBB consulting firms, this stands for McKinsey, BCG, Bain, but also other tier 1, tier 2 consulting firms do look like at the moment. For that I talked to several friends who had interviews in these firms in the last months and also did a little Instagram survey where I got lots of other impressions from people literally around the world. So I'm first going to describe how these interviews look like at the moment but then also sharing a couple of tips and tricks what you can do to better adapt to the situation and hopefully improve your performance in these interviews as much as possible. So welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich and on my channel I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your career. Though before we start I want to make the disclaimer that even within the same firm interview processes can change significantly country by country also office by office within one country so as always take this information with a grain of salt though I do believe that there are some valuable lessons to be learned for most people applying to consulting in these special times. So let's start now though what many people reported is that most of these consulting firms now apply a two-tiered approach. They have some kind of automated assessment going on as a first step and then they conduct the more well-known regular interviews as a second step in some type of telephone or video conference based format. So let's jump into both of these types one after the other and then let me share some insights on them as well. So let's start with the automated online assessment. Now, almost all of these consulting firms have some kind of digital tests like this going on. So already pretty well known is the McKinsey problem solving game where based on their information they ask you to balance out an ecosystem and pretty much check how well you can interact with information presented in tables and other forms and a similar but maybe a bit more traditional approach is what BCG is doing with their interactive online case. This again is where we will need to answer different questions but more in a case based format, a format which more closely resembles the case interviews that you are also known from the main interviews that you will then face in the second step. So several people asked me okay Heinrich what can I do to prepare for that? This is not even the standard case format. What can I really do? There isn't much material out there. And one type of prep material that I found really helpful for these types of online assessments is the GMAT integrated reasoning material. So for the uninitiated integrated reasoning is a section of the GMAT test. GMAT is a big standardized computer based test that is needed for almost all MBA programs to get admitted to them. And in this integrated reasoning section you get different little problems with graphs, with charts, with other information that is presented to you. And then you are asked to answer multiple choice based questions based on these materials. And from everything that I've seen and heard this is exactly the type of format that is used by many of these consulting firms. So if you are looking for some widely available prep formats check out the integrated reasoning section of the GMAT. You will find lots of books on these topics online. So trust this can be helpful for you. The next point that many people underestimate is the time pressure that many of these tests put you into. So often it's not the case that you have open-ended time but in the program there is a timer that runs down and once the timer is at zero you will not be able to answer any more questions. And of course as most of these tests are multiple choice you should make sure that you get until the very end because if for instance there are four answer options available in the multiple choice then just if you are guessing in the end you still will be able to get 25% of the points 25% right. So really do some time management so practice this as well again here the GMAT prep material can be really helpful because there as well you have these time based tests. So make sure that at some point you might just accept to lose on a question just to move on because you do want to avoid of spending all your time on one of many many questions that you need to answer. And last year on the online assessment section always look out for little traps that they pull out for you because of course they also want to test how accurate you can think under pressure. So I've seen how many of these tests where there are some little traps included. So for instance you might be required to multiply a number with a certain percentage figure and then this percentage figure is stated as 0 0.03 
percent. So I'd assume that many people will just take the number and multiply it by 0.03 because they believe that if they do that they're multiplying it with 3%. But of course if the number is stated as 0.03% then you need to divide this number by an additional 100 to actually be able to multiply it correctly. So again these little things might seem obvious but if you're under time pressure looking at these tasks this will exactly be the things that you will miss. Or another thing that I've seen is that maybe there was one number given to you. Maybe the cost of the business in one year and then there were lots of information given from which you needed to calculate the cost of that business in the other year in the next year but then they didn't ask you for the cost of the next year but they asked you for the difference between the cost of the first and the second year so pretty much you needed to calculate the cost for the second year and then subtract the cost from the first year and here again i assume that lots of people will just insert the total cost for the second year just because they were under pressure didn't read this that accurately so always take the time to really precisely understand what you really need to calculate to not make these little mistakes that then cost you the points even though you actually were on the right track you actually actually had all the numbers maybe did all the calculations correct but you just messed up by just answering precisely what was being asked from you so these are these automated online assessments which now get more and more popular with these consulting firms but then at least all the firms that i heard of still also conduct interviews person by person and these take place via video call most of the time now i heard of a couple of instances when the first round there also was a telephone interview and I also heard of instances where there were case interviews conducted on the telephone so I personally believe that this is quite crazy because if you cannot even look somebody in the eye this is really difficult but this might happen to you but then at least for the second round for the more serious interviews there will be video calls so most of them what I've heard are taking place on zoom but I've also heard of these interviews taking place on webex on teams or whatever but here you can trust that then the company will provide the required infrastructure for you to be able to join and then in these interviews all of these mbb consulting firms continue to use the two main interview types which are also used in the part and this is of course first the case interview so i will try to solve the case that the interviewer is presenting for you and then second the behavioral part or personal impact part or personal experience part or whatever the different names are that these companies come up for that and this is the interview where you're confronted with specific situations that might have happened in your life we are supposed to tell some stories how you handled these situations in the past and then there will evolve a conversation around that. So here the bottom line is that this interview part still is very similar to how things were before the current situation evolved. So if you want to prepare for that, look up all the information that you find readily available on the internet on how to win in case interviews, how to win in behavioral interviews. This will still be very much applicable. Though still I want to share two considerations that are really special about this online interview video conference format. And the first is that of course, because you're not sitting face to face in a room, it will be much more difficult to show Show the interviewer your notes because this is a common tactic especially in case interviews to make a very visual drawing of your structure of the case and then show it to the interviewer and then have a discussion based on your notes this of course will be very difficult so you might try whether you can maybe hold it in your webcam but based on the quality of your webcam and also how well the autofocus is it is very likely that this will not really work well that you will not be really be able to show your notes to the interviewer so what this means is that you need to be even more deliberate even more salient even more clear and transparent about what your thought process is so guide the interviewer through your thoughts really explain him the structure and to put even more emphasis on this than you might need to put in a face-to-face -face interview because you do not have the chance to show the interviewer the notes anymore and then the next advice that i have and here especially if you know have a whole set of interviews lined up for the next weeks and month really try to invest into your video conferencing equipment you would be surprised how many Many candidates will sit there just with an old laptop an old built-in webcam in the laptop of not even full HD and then also not really using a proper microphone but just the built-in mic that comes with your laptop so while this might work and I trust many people will also be able to get offers with such an equipment one way to show your professionalism at least on a subconscious level for the interviewer is to make sure that you really have a good picture that you really have professional audio professional sound so here if you are willing to invest the car couple of hundred bucks and this might be worthwhile if you have a whole set of interviews now lined up i'd encourage you to first upgrade your audio i believe the audio will be the most important factor driving your impression and you can get some very decent usb mics which are pretty much plug and play for 100 bucks or below and then second if you are willing to invest a little bit more try to get at least a full hd webcam and if you have a good and current dslr there are different options to also use your dslr 
DSLR, also mirrorless camera as a webcam. And this of course will significantly increase your picture quality. And then the third tip to really improve your picture with simple means is lighting. Even bad cameras will always look much better if you have good lighting. Here again for 50 bucks or so you could get yourself a nice ring light, one that also have here in front of me. This will put great light on you and this will significantly improve the picture output that you have. And again, if you do all this, the interviewer will notice it. Here's one candidate after each other, all of them with crappy audio, crappy video. And are you suddenly sitting there like a pro? This will make some kind of impression. This will show that you're serious and that you have a professional mindset when approaching these types of situations. So I hope that this was helpful and insightful. As always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below in the comment section. I will do my very best to answer every single comment that you write. And as you know, every comment helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So it's very much appreciated to hear from you guys. Let me know where I can help. And then if you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all my content. I also have a mailing list. You can sign up to that via the link in the video description. And if you want to see even more from me, also follow me on Instagram. My handle is Firm Learning. And I'd also invite you to reach out on LinkedIn. Again, link to my LinkedIn below in the video description. Let's get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. I now want to say thank you to all the members of Firm Learning. You're really making a difference for this channel, for the course. Thank you so much. And if you want to become a member as well and get access to some member only perks, hit the join button next to the subscribe button. So if you watched until the end, let me know below in the comments just so that I know this is very much appreciated. I'm releasing videos every single week on Saturdays and sometimes even some additional bonus videos. So very much looking forward to talk to you again here in one week. Until then, good weekend to all of you. This is Heinrich from From Learning. Bye bye. Cheers, guys.